honestly, I don't even know where to start with this video. <laughs> I remember filming my last Swedish death cleaning video. I remember reading the book. I remember watching the show. And then I kind of got sucked into this vortex where I have sat for the last six plus weeks. I have been decluttering and purging in every area of my home with a level of enthusiasm that I have never had for this process. And I have a few thoughts on why. I can't wait to share them with you. I'm really glad that you're here. If this is the first video you're watching from me, I am not a crazy person, ish. Swedish Death Cleaning is a, it's from a book by a woman named Margaret Magnusson. It is all about simplifying your life so that if you should perish, the people you love will not be burdened with their grief and your crap. That's the bottom line. But it's so much more than that. And to me, I have done so many different decluttering methods. I have done KonMari. I have read the home edit books. I have followed even way back in the day, a guy named Don Aslett that I used to follow. This is the first time that there has been some sort of mind shift that has enabled me to once and for all dispose of things that had been taking up space in my life for far too long. So let's start with my first observation. Swedish death cleaning is like an onion. And I say that because every time you think, oh, I, I'm doing such a good job. I'm almost there. Surely I'm almost finished. You get done with like phase one and you uncover an entirely new layer. I have decided, originally I had optimistically thought that this process would take, you know, a few weeks and then I would be done. Oh, no, that is not the way this is going to work. This process is going to take me as long as the time I have here on the earth, I think, at this point. I have been doing it. I, I've been spending hours and hours every week, and I still feel like I have just scratched the surface. And then add to that the fact that I am someone who stuffs things in drawers anyway. So the outside of my home doesn't really look that different. But if you were to open drawers and cupboards, things have changed. I cannot tell you how many trips to Goodwill I've taken. It really feels like my belongings are duplicating, which makes no logical sense. But I will tell you this, as you peel back the layers of the onion, if you were wanting to do like a low buy year or a no buy year, this will cure you of wanting anything to come into your house ever to the point where even just like things that are needed, I'm searching high and low to see if maybe I have stashed somewhere an extra of that item before we go out and purchase it. Something has definitely shifted. Some of the things I've been able to get rid of that have surprised me are things like letters and cards, mementos from my childhood. I have those memories in my brain. I don't need to have the physical items and I know my kids aren't gonna care about them. Things I really do think that they will care about, I am putting in, a, in an obvious place, putting it in an intentional way and everything else is just being released from my life. So yeah, that's, that's my big number one. Swedish death cleaning, is like an onion. Okay, number two, take your time with this process, but also you're gonna have to find your time. I found I am the most effective at this when I just grab time where I can, whether that be 10 minutes in, in a morning or it's, it's hotter than Hades here in Atlanta right now. So like the afternoons where normally I would be out running errands and doing things, maybe meeting friends for coffee, we're all just stuck in our houses. So that's a really great opportunity to take an hour or two, go work down in my nice cool basement, things like that. You're never gonna find hours and hours of time to do this. But if you take time that you can find every single day, you will eventually start making headway. So that's still my birthday balloon. That will tell you what date this is. We're close to the end of July. My birthday balloon is about ready to go in the garbage. But the reason I'm filming this, um, well, I'm watching a decluttering video while I'm decluttering and several of you have told me that you do that too and it makes me so happy and some of you are even watching my videos while you're doing your own decluttering. Very happy, very full circle moment for me. But the reason I'm coming to you in my pajamas is because I had about two hours this morning. It's a Sunday morning, everyone else is still sleeping. Scott got in late last night so I have a couple hours before he wakes up because we're gonna spend some time together today. We have a super busy day 
And I wasn't originally planning on doing anything today, but when you get into the mindset of breaking it into smaller chunks, it's amazing what you can get done because I still have to put things back, but I literally, in less than an hour, just got a huge box of donations and three full garbage bags in less than an hour. And it, it I mean, it was time that I would have honestly just spent like messing around on the internet. So there you go. Find the time in little fits and spurts and don't get in the mindset of thinking that you have to have this, you know, huge day to do this big project. I'm so proud of how much I got done in such a short period of time this morning. And it also keeps you from getting overwhelmed. So there you go. So you can't wait for some big old block of time to drop into your lap. That is not going to happen, but you can grab time when you can. And if you have a good system in place for the disposal of things, you, you really can get a lot of work done in 10 or 15 minutes. Speaking of disposal, number three, think through your disposal plan before you start. So many of you on my last video were so helpful to tell me you should donate blankets and whatever to animal rescue. You should donate suitcases to foster care. You should donate nice clothes to women's shelters. All good things, all true things. It's not going to happen. I had to pick one place that all of the donations were going to go. If I waited until I had the time to go through the stuff, package up the stuff, research where to take the stuff, and then drive all over town to five different places to take the stuff, this was never going to happen. So in my opinion, pick one central place that is going to be your donation central. Everything goes to that place. I chose my local Goodwill. They now know me by name. We've had multiple conversations. Okay, I'm just leaving Goodwill. I'm just gonna pull up a little bit here. And um, just a reminder, do not give trash to Goodwill. The guy just told me if they open a bag and there's like trash and they can see that there's trash in the bag, they throw the whole bag away. So don't give them stuff that's ripped. Don't give them stuff that's damaged. Only give to Goodwill and really any donation center unless they're specifically meant to just be total recycling, only give things in good condition. Okay, this is like my ninth trip here in the last three weeks. Only donate things in good working condition. Only donate clothes that are not ripped, stained, or torn. And just really try to be mindful about what you're taking. But I've taken them some great stuff. And it's also brought to mind, and this is point number four, we change as people and it's okay to release things from a person that you aren't anymore, okay? I used to be really into like Disney collectibles and things like that. I'm not anymore. I was able to give some beautiful things to some neighbor kids, some people that really are into that kind of thing. I'm just not into anything that's like a tchotchke or memorabilia. I, I even let like my D23 membership lapse. It was a little tricky to release that part of myself, but I needed that for a particular phase of my life. I don't need it anymore. And I can release the me that needed that. It has been unbelievably freeing for me to release myself from these belongings. So don't hold on to a version of yourself that doesn't exist anymore and release the things that go with that human being because you don't need those things. And it's just, it will just make you incredibly happy. Okay, that, well, that was that number five? Yeah, that was number five. Okay, number six. Uh, you, you will never regret throwing something away unless it is something of like serious sentimental value. Uh, I have got, I have been shocked at the things that I have gotten rid of. And if I sat here today and you're like, oh, aren't you sorry you got rid of that? Not at all. One of the big tenets of Swedish death cleaning is reminding you that you don't need the item to hold on to the memory. The memory is in your mind. And I don't know why I wasn't ready for that up until this point, but now that I'm ready, I am like Sherman marching through Georgia. I am just going crazy with this stuff. And it is making me feel liberated from my things is kind of nuts. Can't force that change to happen. But when the shift in the change happens, you are going to feel this uh, level of freedom from things, which I think will absolutely change your life. Now, how is this different from when I did the KonMari method? And I think I touched on this a little bit in the first video, but now I have it more cemented in my mind. The KonMari method almost felt 
too aggressive to me and too abrupt because it was this idea of dumping everything out and having to go through all of it all at once. This is a much more gentle approach. It's actually in the name. And there's this idea that I literally have the rest of my days on this earth to complete this task. So knowing that I have all the time in the world, I feel like I can just open a drawer, do a shelf, do a area of the pantry, do a box. Instead of it has to be like the KonMari method, you do all of your clothes and then you do all of your books, then you do all of your mementos. It's too much. And even if you have all the time in the world, personally, I think it's too much emotionally and you need to take your time going through these things. Um, and it's actually been a really beautiful process for me. So what I had thought would happen is I would come to you with this video today and this process would be complete and somehow all of this would be miraculously done and I could be like, I've decluttered my whole house. But the truth is I have been married for 34 years. We've been in this house nine years and when we moved into this house, my mother-in-law had just passed away and I got a whole bunch of things from her household that came with us that I didn't have time to sort through. So I am sorting through decades of belongings and it's going to take me a lot of time. But the good news is I plan on being here for quite a bit longer. So if you are doing Swedish death cleaning, I hope this has been encouraging. I hope that you feel motivated, but mostly I hope that you understand that you can't get this done in a weekend and it can take as much time as you need because the Swedish death cleaning isn't going anywhere, but your stuff sure as heck is. Whatever you're doing, I hope you're finding joy and I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love to have you here. It's free and it really does me a lot of good here on YouTube. And also, if you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. See you next time. Bye.